good to see you. Good turnout. Thank you. So we're going to discuss a little bit about hoof trimming and hoof health and a little bit about somatic cell counts, just to touch on that, okay? Uh, but what I really want to uh, get you to appreciate this morning is, is how important it is to have good hooves, right? Okay? Because if we want efficient cows, they need to be able to walk to the bunk. And more importantly, they need to be able to lie down in the stall, right? So what do you know about cows which are lame and their behavior in a stall or the cubicle? What can you tell me? They'll lie for longer. They'll lie for longer or they will stand for longer, right? Because a cow with a bad hoof, it's very, very painful for it to get up and, and, and lie down. So it tends to either lie down and not go to the feed bunk. And then when it does go to the feed bunk, it eats a lot of food at once or it only has a lot of concentrate in the parlor and then it has acidosis, okay? Or it doesn't eat enough and it loses weight. And it's just a vicious circle, right? Okay? So one of the key things is that you all are able to attend to a cow with a bad hoof, right? And the key of it all is, is early attention to the cow, okay? So when you see a cow limping, really it's too late, okay? And it's very difficult to get that cow to rec recover, okay? And I'll just explain briefly why that is, okay? So, what we have here is, anybody know what these are? Those who heard me speak before probably remember. I think you, maybe, yeah. No? I thought you had. Yeah, you know what? Pedal bones, yeah? Okay? So this pedal bone is from a healthy cow, right? So if you want to pass it round. So it's the, the bone that's inside the hoof capsule, right? Inside the claw, yeah? Okay? And then this is a pedal bone from a cow that's lame. Okay, now what you'll notice, there's a change in the conformation of it, okay? So what's happened is there's what we call a calcification of the bone. Okay, you can see it's rough, right? All this extra bone that's been added. And what's happening there is because we're not treating the cow earlier, this calcification is happening to the bone. And then this cow will be, la will be lame for, for her entire life. You'll always be trimming her, okay? So it's really important to identify cows which are starting to go lame and to treat them, okay? So how many of you trim your cow's feet? Yourself on the farm? Or you have a worker that does it for you? Who are you trimming? Oh, no. no? Anybody? You do some of yourself? How many of you got cows? All got cows, right? This gentleman's got cows or no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you got a shoot, a crush, for trimming feet? Okay, that's pretty good, yeah? Okay. And uh, where's he gone? So he will tell you that the best thing he ever did was to buy this shoot. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah? Because, <laughs> because when, I came, when I came here first, he didn't have a shoot. And then he bought a shoot. And he said that it's made a big difference to the lameness on the farm. Okay, because he's able to treat cows very early. Okay. So predominantly, we use the, the Dutch five-step method. Okay, whichever you want to call it. And that's what we're going to run through today on this cow, okay? And basically, this, the step one is basically to get the length of the toe, okay? So you can see from the, the diagram here, the top left, we're measuring the length of the toe, okay? And that should be around about 81 millimeters, depending on the, on the age of the animal, okay? So you can go down to 75 on a heifer. But if you're carving heifers at 28, 29 months, then 81 millimeters is good, okay? And it's roughly, depending on the size of your hand, it's roughly the, the width of your hand, okay? And a lot of people use the hand to measure this length, okay? But just be cautious, if you've got small hands, you're going to be cutting the toes too short, okay? What's the risk of cutting the toes too short? Say again? Yeah, that can be one, especially on the toe, right? Okay, so when you cut the toe too short, and then you balance the, 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 the soles, what you'll get is you get a thin sole, okay? And also you'll get a, a higher risk of having a toe ulcer or toe necrosis, okay? So it's very, very important that you don't cut the toes too short, okay? So if there's any doubt on the length of the toe, don't cut it, just leave it, okay? Just focus on balancing, okay? So you can see here we've cut the length of the, the, the toes, then the next step is to balance the two soles, okay? Now this is the, the inner claw on the right hand side, 
Okay, you can see the yellow shaded area. You shouldn't be grinding any of that away. Okay, on the inner claw, the hind feet, right? Okay, it's very, very important. Why? Because it's usually this side which is grown the most, the outer claw. Okay, and the more you take down the inner claw, then the more you have to take down the outer claw to get the balance. Okay, and I'll show you on the live cow. Okay. Then the, the third method, the third step, is that we're doing the modelling. Okay, so you can see the yellow area on the blue. This is called the modelling. Okay, who's got those bones? And the reason we model is just to protect these pedal bones. Okay, so if you think, this is the, the claw, this is the pedal bone. Okay, where a sole ulcer is happening? Pretty self-explanatory. They're happening here, right? Okay, and the reason is, is that the pressure of this bone in that sole ulcer region, okay? And that region corresponds to this yellow area here on the left-hand side. So when we take, when we model out, I'll show you on this cow now, we're reducing the risk of that cow developing a sole ulcer. Okay, so it's a very critical step. And if you don't do anything on a cow, just model out, that is going to help her to reduce the risk of, of sole ulcers. Okay, so you can see the red area here is where we typically have the sole ulcers. So the next step is just to identify if the cow has a problem. Okay, does she have a sole ulcer, a white line, or even dermatitis? And then the final step will be to uh, trim any loose horn. Okay, but we'll hopefully show you on this cow now. So some of you can come and stand by the chute. Others of you can watch on the, on, the mo on the monitor, okay, and hopefully we can just show you some of those steps. Okay, anybody want to make some comments about this to begin with? What lame score was the cow before you pulled her out? Just Good point, okay, so when the cow comes in, it's important that you look whether she's lame or not, okay? If she's not lame when she walks in, then you're not looking for a problem, right? So you don't need to go digging and following every black spot on the claw, okay? It's, it's not required if she's not lame, okay? That's a very good point. I didn't score her. But I'd say she has a little something wrong on the back right, okay? Just do by the, a little bit of inflammation around the coronary run. Any other comments? Okay, we'll, ju we'll, just, uh, we'll just go through the steps, okay, and then we'll make some co comments as we go along, okay? So, does anybody remember what the first step was? The toe. <laughs> the toe. The length of the toe, yeah? So, the reference claw is the inner claw on the hind feet, and everything I tell you about trimming on the hind feet will be the complete opposite on the front, okay? So, just everything I do, you reverse it on the front, okay? So, we're measuring the length of the toe, okay, on the inner claw, and like I said, it's about 81 millimeters, okay? Now the critical thing is where you measure from, okay? Okay, so what you'll notice is if you use your hand, okay, you st tend to start to measure from the hairline, okay, the coronary band. The actual measurement of 81 millimeters is where the horn starts to go hard below the hairline, okay? So I'll just show you. Okay, so that's soft there, okay? You can see it there? Okay, soft. Okay, and then it gets hard by there, a little bit lower down. Okay, so this toe is more or less the right length, right? So the only thing I can do by cutting these toes shorter is to increase her risk of being lame. Okay? The other toe, toe is the same length, so there's no need to shorten any of the toes, okay? Everybody remember what the next step is? The modeling. No, before that. The balancing the soles, okay? And which area did I say we shouldn't touch with the, with the, with the grinder? The back. The back, the inside, uh, the rear of the medial claw, okay? Okay, and what we're trying to do, we need to balance these two, okay? What do we think? Good? Bad? Good. Stability? Excellent, right? Don't need to touch her. I don't need to even run the grinder over it to see if there's anything wrong, yeah? We know there's nothing wrong, okay? If I was to grind this off, I would probably start to get a thin sole, okay? If I applied pressure, 
Okay, if I apply it, if I, come on. Here. Okay, if I took st maybe two or three millimeters off there, I would be creating a thin sole. Okay, so don't refrain from thinning the sole too much, okay? The next step, modeling, modeling okay. And the other thing I'd just like to show you, just, uh, so what we're, what we're trying to do, isn't it, is on that toe, is to balance the toe in terms of the interaction with the ground, right? Okay, so this has just basically done a, uh, a, a mirror image of how that sole interacts with the ground, okay? So you can see that it's pretty much well balanced, okay? There's no need to do anything with those claws. Okay, so modeling, so we can do it with the grinder. I don't need to do it with the grinder now. But we're modeling the outside claw, okay? And we can do that with the grinder very nicely. The grinder is very good for modeling because it creates a nice shape, the exact shape of the model. Or we can just use a knife. So hopefully these knives are sharp. Yeah, so if we check the angle, okay, you can see that she's got pretty good toe angle, right? Yeah. Okay, and, and the other thing to consider, I'm a bit neutral with toe angle, right? Because I think that if this sole looks well balanced, okay, and she's walking nicely, do I need to change the way she walks? Yeah, so the thing with the angle, the point I would make with the angle, if she's got a very shallow angle, there's more pressure in that sole ulcer region, okay? So... It is important to correct if they have a very uh, shallow angle. It is important to get that up to around 50 degrees angle, right? Okay, you're absolutely right. Okay, but this one, and that's all really we need to do. We just need to clean a little bit. Oh, too many cables. Put those. Okay, so I'll just clean any loose tissue here. Okay, we don't need to model on the inner claw. Okay, why? Because we don't get sole ulcers. Okay, so we need to model on the outside claw. Okay, and it's important that the model goes far across, uh, probably in the region of two-thirds of the way across that outer claw. Okay, and the reason why is because a sole ulcer can happen anywhere in this region. Okay, so by taking the pressure, uh, by modeling, you're taking the pressure away off that pedal bone which I showed you at the start. Okay. Any remember what the final point was? Just to clean any loose tissue, right? Okay. Why do we clean the loose tissue? Because in herds where we tend to get quite a bit of dermatitis, if you have loose tissue, then the dermatitis can start to work into the sole, into the heel, and then you can get underrunning and you can get that uh, bacteria entering into the corium, okay? So it's always good to take any loose tissue away uh, from that, that heel region okay so I'll just and there's not much here to be fair okay okay so just take that away okay so that's all I would be doing to that one right okay so what would be our uh, protocol if we had a sole ulcer or we had a thin sole, what would you be doing? A shoe, a block, sorry, just go. So a block, okay. So I would put a block even if we had some bruising. If I had a severe bruising in the sole ulcer region, I would be putting a block on that cow just to give a time to recover and to stop that, sole ulcer, uh, that uh, hemorrhaging progressing to a sole ulcer, okay. And the other, key part of the treatment recommended at the moment is anti-inflammatories. Okay, so for any hoof lesion, you should be giving that cow anti-inflammatories for two or three days. Okay, and the reason for that is one is obviously to reduce the inflammation, but also to reduce the pain as well. Okay, because when you reduce the pain, you keep the cow behaving more normal, eating, lying, getting up, going to the milking parlor. Okay, um, what about dermatitis? What's our treatment for, for DD? 
either fuck bath and, or else bring them in once a week and I go and wash their feet and then spray on chemical directly onto it. Yeah, very good protocol, yeah. So the foot bath is only there to control the spread of DD within the herd. Okay, because basically you're only killing the bacteria on the surface of the, of the DD lesion. If you really want to get rid of DD, then you have to do what this gentleman is suggesting, which is bringing them in, cleaning it off, and cleaning it off as vigorously as you can to remove the scab, then treating it again. And you have to do it probably two or three times before you get a good kill. And the reason is, is the bacteria is very, very deep inside the tissue. Okay? You can use bluestone directly. You can use teramycin spray. You can use salicyclic acid. Okay? Lots of different things you can use to treat those. You don't necessarily need to bandage them. And if you are going to bandage them, take the bandage off within, within certainly 24 hours. Don't leave the bandage on. Okay? Leaving the bandage on is, is a very bad thing to do in terms of the, the animal's chances of recovery. Okay? How long should you leave a block on for? Until the uh, so next you're gonna, time you're, you're gonna inspect her in, them off? Yeah, so you'd inspect her in two weeks. Right? If she had a sole ulcer, you'd inspect her in two weeks. So then you decide then what you want to do in terms of leaving the block on. Or taking it off. Would it do any long-term damage if you just left it on? You know, I, yeah, just again, not yeah. again I, I think the imbalance in the cow can be a big issue, right? Because it's not natural to walk around with one leg elevated. So I think if in, in 15 days, if the, if the sole ulcer is recovered, I would be very uh, positive about removing the block. Okay? But again, it depends on the rate of recovery. The, the one thing to, to really... Uh, grasp in all this is uh, if you've got lots of lame cows you've got to ask why okay and in general it's going to be something to do with either um, the, the design of your stalls your cows not lying down okay the way you handle the cows on the concrete competition at the feed bunk or how well those cows are transitioning uh, during the calving period okay those are the main reasons why okay now, the other thing to consider with the comfort is if this cow was lame and she was lame because she doesn't lie down for long enough or whatever, putting her back in an uncomfortable stall is not going to increase her chances of recovery. Okay, so in a, in a, in a, in a barn or a yard with comfortable stalls, lame cows have a better chance of recovery. Okay, if you put a lame cow back in a bad stall, the chances of recovery are less. Okay, so again, if you're very close to drying off and you find a cow with a lesion, I would be considering I'll dry her off early, I'll give her a chance to recover, that she doesn't have to walk to the milking parlor every day or lie in the stalls. Okay? So four factors for success, okay? So this was done by AHDB. Uh, still very relevant, okay? Low infection pressure. So that's focusing on infectious diseases, so like dermatitis. Okay, so the key things here are hygiene and foot bathing, but also controlling your DD in your dry cows and heifers. Okay, if you've got DD in your heifers, it's always coming into your mature cows. Okay, so you have to look up the stream and see where the problem's coming from. Okay, so very important to look at the heifers. Good hoof shape, okay, you mentioned digital cushion. Okay, we can see it there. Digital cushion usually follows body condition score. So if you're losing a lot of body condition score in early lactation, there's a good chance you've got these thin uh, fat pads in the, in the foot, okay? Horn quality comes down to hydration, so how wet the environment is, and also in terms of stresses, okay? So things like acidosis, things like diseases around transition will disrupt the growth of the horn and make it less durable, okay? And then obviously foot trimming. Okay, it's important. Early detection, like I said, right at the start, keep your eye out for those cows which are starting to go lame. They're the ones that you can help. Okay, the ones which have swollen feet and are always lame, you may as well just ship them, right? They're not helping your efficiency. Okay? Uh, and then low forces, we've already talked about this, good comfort in the stalls. Where you have lots of concrete, like we do, lots of slats, it's important the way you move the cows around the barn, right? Okay, a lot of problems are called by, caused by people who move the cows to the milking center too aggressively. Okay, or they're chasing them out of the parlor and they're turning tight corners, okay? Let them move in their own time. That's 25 minutes, yeah. Okay, we'll wait for the next two minutes. 
Okay, so just a little bit about minerals, okay, and hoof quality. Just like to show you, building quality horn is like building a block wall, right? Okay, and the three minerals, zinc, copper, and manganese, play a key role in building good horn, okay? So we can see, if we, if we think of the horn as a, a block wall, zinc influences the blocks that we're building the wall with, the keratin, okay? Then we have the copper is like the steel in the wall, right? It's joining all the those blocks together, creating strong horn. And then you all know about biotin, you've heard about biotin and how important it is at binding these horn blocks, these keratin blocks together, okay? And zinc also helps with the activity of biotin. So if you're gonna feed biotin in your diet, you need a good form of zinc, okay? And uh, the final one, of course, is manganese. Manganese is very important for maintaining bone quality, okay? So the pedal bone and the other bones, okay? Okay, I said we were going to talk a little bit about somatic cell counts. Cows which are lame also have mastitis, usually. They're the ones, right? The They're the ones, the lame cows are the ones with dirty stalls. Okay, so you've got a, a cow which is in pain, has inflammation, low immune system, dirty stall, open teat canal because she's leaking milk, and then she's at higher risk of mastitis. Okay, and if we're talking about the cost of somatic cell counts, we can see here, if we look at somatic cell count, its effect on milk production. So this is milk loss in first and second plus lactation, right? Okay, and just be mindful of one thing. It's the cell count of all the cows, not the milk which is in the bulk in going in the tanker, right? Because that's two different numbers, okay? So you can see if you've got 100 cows, 30% first lactation, cell count of 200,000, it's about 50,000 liters a year not being sold. Okay, and the one thing I would say is let's just focus on simple things like the health of the teat. Okay, and how can we improve the health of the teat? Milking, okay, good functional milking equipment, making sure there's no damage to that teat end. Okay, again, zinc is very important. So we've done studies uh, all over the world where we've shown that when we feed Zimpro zinc, Avela dairy minerals, we can improve the robustness of that teat and its resistance to mastitis, okay? And then, of course, you have the biological barriers and the immune system, okay? And again, trace, good trace mineral nutrition will boost the immunity of these animals and help them to combat uh, mastitis pathogens, okay? So it's very important. And then if you look at the outside again, you can see the important things are, again, a lot of the things to do with lameness, hygiene, good comfort, Okay, also important for uh, mastitis. Okay, any questions? Because I know you have to move on. Thank you for the questions, good points. Very much appreciated. <laughs>